Welcome to our tutorial on the Parallel Curve command. Let's begin by activating the Parallel Curve command and exploring its definition window. First, let's select a curve, Sketch 1. Next, we'll select a support, Extrude 1. I can drag the handles to set up the appropriate distance. We can also use the Law tool to define the curve position. Press Law to open the Law definition window. Our first Law type option is Constant. That's effectively the same as entering a distance right here. Our next law type is linear. This creates a linear progression between the start and end values. Right now, my start is 22 millimeters and my end value is 0 millimeters. Let's close the law definition window to see how it looks. Preview. You see that the distance between these two curves increases in a linear progression from 0 to 22 millimeters. Let's open the law definition window again. Our next law type is called S type. Now the distance between the two curves changes in a progression that resembles an S curve. Let's close the law definition window and preview to see our changes. The last law type option we'll look at is called Advanced. This option allows us to select a law element. We're going to explore this type later in this tutorial. Check here to inverse the law that you've opted for. Let's close the definition window and take a preview. You can see how our curve has inversed accordingly. The next definition area in our Parallel Curve dialog window is Parameters. Let's change the curve first. I'll use this one. Under Distance, I'll use a constant law type and inverse it. Our constant will be 10 millimeters. Tab, Preview, and Reverse Direction. Let's preview again. We have the option to use sharp or rounded corners. Here's a preview with rounded corners. We can choose a parallel mode, Euclidean or geodesic. Let's click OK for now. All right, let's right click and hide geometrical set 1 for now. Let's bring in geometrical set 3. Now let's activate the Parallel Curve command again. Project.2 will be our curve. For our support, we'll choose Extrude 3. Preview. We don't see anything. The reason for this is that Geometrical Set 1 is in hidden space, and it's defined as an in-work object. You can see here it's grayed out. OK. Let's right-click on Geometrical Set 2. Select Define in Work Object. Now, let's expand Geometrical Set 1 and right-click on Parallel 2. Let's do this differently. I'm going to select Parallel 2, select Edit, Parallel 2 Object. Right-clicking gives us the same options. It was just below the bottom line, so it would be hard for you to see. I'm going to change the geometrical set now. Under Destination, I'll select Geometrical Set 3. Click OK and it appears right here. Now let's double click Parallel 2. Let's reverse the direction. Preview. Let's go back and look at the parallel mode type. As I mentioned, I've got two options. Let's select Geodesic. And let's grab this handle to change our constant value. When I drag it too far, I get an error message. Let's click OK. And we're going to enter the value manually of, let's say, 40 millimeters. Click Preview. 
Basically, CATIA calculates the distance between these two curves along the support surface. By the way, we got the error message because this side went off the surface in both directions. Let's enter a value of 40 millimeters, hit Tab and Preview. What happens when I select the Euclidean parallel mode and hit Preview? The curve obviously changes. CATIA calculates the distance, shortening it regardless of the support. But it does create the curve while still relying on that support. Let's make a few more changes. Preview. You see that the curve has broken. Let's click OK. And we're going to opt to keep all the sub elements and click OK again. Let's go back to Geometrical Set 1. Right click, Hide. Now, let's right click and Define in Work Object. You see that Katia brings Geometrical Set 1 back automatically from Hide Show. Right now, everything is selected here. I'm going to deselect and activate the Parallel Curve command. I'll select my curve and my support. We have the option to go through a point. I can right click and create a point. I'm going to cancel out for now though. Let's select a plane and a point. I'll drop a point in some position right here. Click OK. Let's activate the Parallel Curve command again. We select our curve and our point and click Preview. You see we don't have the option to create on both sides or to repeat the object after OK for obvious reasons because we only have one point. Let's click OK and collapse the tree. Right click, Hide, and right click on Geometrical Set 2 and select Define in Work Object. Now let's activate the Parallel Curve command again. Select this curve and this support. We'll enter a constant distance of 10 millimeters. Hit Tab and Preview. Let's check both sides. Click OK. Now let's bring in the Analysis Toolbar. Right click. Oops, everything is grayed out. The reason for this, let's go to Tools, Customize, Options, and uncheck Lock Toolbar Position. Click Close. Now we can bring in the Analysis Toolbar. And let's activate the Curve Connect Checker and run a curvature analysis. Let's zoom in a little bit. You see that even though we created both of these curves from the same curve along the same surface, the discontinuity value is actually different. It's not much different, but it is indeed different. What I'm trying to point out is that if you create a product which requires very tight precision and you create new geometry based on existing geometry, you're going to have to keep an eye out for this type of discontinuity. Let's cancel out for now. We'll expand our tree. Double click on Parallel.4. Under the Smoothing Definition section, we've got Tangency and Curvature Smoothing options. Let's enable the 3D Smoothing checkbox and click OK. Now let's run an analysis again. And you can see that we've fixed our continuity problem. 
The only drawback of 3D smoothing is that the curve isn't exactly lying down on the support surface. Now most of the time, this isn't a problem. In some cases, you may find that it might be. Let's cancel out of this for now. Let's double-click Parallel.4 again. Our last option is to repeat object after OK. Let's check it and see if it works in this case. OK. Instances. Let's enter 1 and click OK. And as you see, it did work. Sometimes this doesn't work depending upon the complexity of your underlying geometry. OK. Let's expand Parallel 6. You see that underneath Parallel 6, we've got Parallel 7. The offset distance for Parallel 7 is indeed formula-driven. Let's double-click on Parallel 7. We still have Project.1 and Extrude.2 as our curve and support, respectively. It's just that the distance is driven by formula. Let's click Cancel and OK. And this concludes our tutorial on the Parallel Curve command.